for those of us that have been in the awakening process, we're here to be the anchors and the embodiment of this energy so that we can be there for everyone as they're waking up. So I just really feel called to say, um, all of you here, you're already part of this and we're all doing this together. And I'm so excited for our first speaker, Suzanne Ross, who's amazing. So Alan, do you want to go ahead? I was just saying yes, thanks, Nicole, because she has dedicated herself, her life, her work, to ascension, to the process of ascension. She's been doing, I think, 15 years now. Yeah. Have you been doing the ascension? <laughs> Sedona's ascension retreats around the uh, spring equinox, and she's going to be doing it this year, March 17th to the 19th. Be there in Sedona. We have a place for everyone. It's a big, big room, and we want to fill this up with this vibration. And Suzanne has dedicate herself to getting some of the best people I know besides me, Neil Tangela, Nicole there, <laughs> but JJ Hurtak and Desiree Hurtak are going to be there. Paul Selig, um, who else? Uh, William Henry. These are, uh, um, these are people who've devoted their lives to this message of awakening. Um, Michael Jaco, um, Billy Carson. There, there's, this is a real, cast of of stars you know it's a real all-star lineup and and Suzanne you've really put it together in a beautiful place and I'm, and I know it's your life I know I you know I've been to your home I see the 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 keys of Enoch all over your wall because it's like you are waking the parts of yourself up and it's it's just no it's great to know you've put all that internal uh, uh, investigations that and back out into the world. So thanks so much for being here, joining us all today and, and doing what you're doing. Mm. Bless you all for facilitating this ascension of the soul event, my beloved soul brothers and sisters. And yes, we're all dedicated to the awakening and ascension of humanity. And I also want to sincerely thank our soul family members who are joining us for this Ascension of the Soul Summit this weekend. Everyone is an integral part of the awakening and ascension of humanity, whether you're part of presenting or whether you're joining us. We create a powerful force of love and light for all of humanity by coming together online or live And we can pour that love light into the ley lines of planet Earth and send this powerful ascension energy around the planet. And so uh, for my presentation today, I'd like to teach a little and then move into a practice. I know I only have a half hour, so I'm going to do my best to fit it into that time frame. And so the name of my presentation today is Ascension Through Transfiguration, and I have dedicated the last couple of decades to studying ascension, to understanding ascension from both a practical uh, point of view where we apply ascension practices to our daily life. So for me, ascension is a way of being as well as the act of doing ascension practices. And so we know there are many powerful ascension practices, many that have to do with activating your rainbow light body. And then it's going out into the world and radiating your rainbow light body upon the earth and toward others. So there's ascension practices and an ascended way of being, an ascended way of living and being. Ascension through transfiguration, I wanted to look up, what is the definition of ascension? The act of rising to an important position or rising to a higher level. And I thought it was wonderful that the example was the ascent of Christ into heaven during the resurrection. Right. So we know that part of the ascension is to embody Christ consciousness and to raise our consciousness up to that level. And transfiguration 
this is a wonderful definition, a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. And this literally says in this light, the junk undergoes a transfiguration. It shines. And so, I mean, I immediately thought of junk DNA, right? So much of our ascension practices focus on activating dormant DNA, which physicists have called junk DNA. And of course, we know there's no such thing as junk in any part of our beings. When this definition literally said this, in this light, the junk undergoes a transfiguration. It shines. I thought, wow, yes. And then it's also a definition of Christ's appearance and radiant glory to his disciples. And that's what we're being called to do, to appear in our radiant glory to all of our brothers and sisters on this planet. I love to share this illustration because this is the time that we're in, right? It's this bizarre dance of light and shadow. And I love in the bottom right corner, this picture of the angel and the demon, right? Wrapped around like our vertebrae, like this is our kundalini light of energy. And here we are in this fourth dimensional transitional plane where it is the realm of choice and many channelers have said that this is the realm of choice where the soul has an opportunity to choose to ascend into the light to choose to serve the light selflessly if they're done learning through separation and suffering or for those souls who might be new to the third dimensional plane, and they still have a lot of lessons to learn through the realm of duality, they may want to choose to continue to learn in that way, right? And so here in this fourth dimensional transitional plane, you choose to serve the light selflessly, or you can choose to continue to learn lessons in the third dimension. I truly believe, like many, that this is the time of a bifurcation right, where it's the co-creation of the new earth, and even in the book of Revelations, which was actually Jesus Christ uh, channeling through John in this cave in Patmos, Greece, saying this is the time of the ascension of the new earth and the descension of the old earth. We think these are new age terms, right? The new earth ascension. But, you know, thousands of years ago, it was written, right, that this is the time of the ascension of the new earth. And there's no judgment about it. It's simply where people are at on their evolutionary journey. And we are in an age of ascension, right? We know that we are on an elliptical path. Our solar system is on an elliptical path where we move from an age of ascension, an age of enlightenment to uh, the dark ages. And historically, we have seen this where it's 12,500 years on an ascending arc into a golden age and 12,500 years on a descending arc into the dark ages. And this is the 3D wheel, right? Buddhism would say this is the wheel of separation and suffering. But there are many valuable lessons to be learned on this wheel. However, many of us are done learning in this way, and we're ready to ascend into the next higher dimensional incarnational plane, which is the fifth dimension that we're all talking about when we choose to serve the light selflessly. <laughs> ascending through the fourth dimensional plane, the gates of ascension open for us. Now I started to wonder, well, wait a minute, if the dark ages, we had the zero point reset when Jesus was born. And then if this is a 12,500 year ascending arc, we would only be 2,022 years on this 12,500 year arc. But then I found this amazing book called the Bilgi Kitabi, who explained that the brotherhoods of light put humanity on this accelerated evolution plan. They also call the salvation plan. And in doing so, we were able 
to catapult into this age of enlightenment. They put this plan into effect in the year 1900, according to the solar hierarchy, and every year became like 100 years. So in 100 years, we're catapulted 10,000 years, and that would put us smack dab into the age of enlightenment. I found that to be so incredible. And so that explained a lot to me. And this is a salvation plan put into effect by the forces of light. The forces of light aware of what the brotherhoods of darkness are up to. And so let's remember here that everyone who comes here plays a role that there are people who have come here to herald humanity into the ascension of the new earth. And there are those whose responsibility is to guide those who aren't done learning on the 3D path, on this descension devolution path back into the dark ages. So everyone has come here to serve their role. But when the Brotherhoods of Light saw the New World Order plan of the Brothers of Darkness, they wanted to give the people of light an opportunity to get off this wheel, catapulting us into an age of enlightenment where we can get off the wheel, we can ascend into the fifth dimension. And so how do we do that? How do we become an ascending avatar? As I said earlier, it's both a way of being and the practices that we do. And so there are many dimensions and theosophy, which Alan has mentioned on a regular basis, because we've both tuned into the teachings of theosophy. Theosophy would say that we as eternal souls are projecting 12 soul aspects into 12 space-time dimensions and giving us 144 soul extensions, which make up our monad. And then there's this 13th gateway dimension, returning us home to source. And so of alignment with that 13 dimensions, uh, there are 13 chakras, 13 sacred sites on planet Earth, 13 constellations in the cosmos, 13 initiations, and 13 DNA strands to be activated. And so this number 13 becomes really important. And you can clearly see here how these dimensions, how these DNA strands, how the chakras and these initiations all put you on the ascension path so that we can become light beings. We can activate our golden light bodies. This is the eye of source. This is also the eye of your eternal soul essence. And so what we can do during these times as well is to engage in practices that tune us in to the eye of our eternal soul, our eternal soul residing in an eternal realm at the core of creation, mentally projecting this space-time construct and projecting avatars of its personality into these dimensions. When in meditation, we can focus on the third eye and set our intention to tune into our eternal soul essence, to project consciousness with the eternal soul who is projecting us. It's as if we can look back at our eternal soul who is looking at us. And in doing so, stream consciousness with our eternal soul. I've come on to a concept recently about living in a virtuality. And in a sense, our eternal soul is playing a virtual reality game with all of its avatars projected into space time, <laughs> right? And so just for our relatability, we can imagine 
us as our eternal souls playing this virtual reality game with all of its avatars dispersed throughout all of these timelines and dimensions. And each of these avatars have free will, free will to make choices that either set it on a path of evolution and ascension or to spiral downward into a dissension path. And you can even see it sometimes in a person's single lifetime where they awaken and they choose ascension or something traumatic might happen in their life and they go on and spiral into the darkness, right? They may set themselves on a path of just self-destruction. And so, interestingly, the gamer behind the scenes, your eternal soul, keeps supporting you by putting you in these different situations in order so that your soul can learn through the lessons it came to learn in each of the timelines that it's projected into. And of course, like any other virtual reality game, the goal of the game is to level up, right? And so your eternal soul rejoices when you choose ascension and evolution. And when you're ready to level up to the next level of the game, and we would call that evolution. So space-time is a mental construct, as many of us know. Sometimes people call it an illusion, but it does seem very real to our senses, right? But we are living in a holographic universe, as we know, and we are holographic fractals. But as holograms go, each holographic fractal still contains the whole. So you and me sitting right here today, are our eternal soul essence. There are some books like the Urantia book, which says that we have seven super universes in space time, which relate to our seven chakras, seven initiations. And I like to talk about the seventh heaven. Like we were talking about, we have 12 archetypes that are projected into each of 12 dimensions in space time for 144 soul extensions that make up our monad. And how does this process work? So as we know, quantum physics has everything to do with the true nature of our reality. And we know through many experiments that there is an observer effect that when we look at our reality, just by observing it, we are collapsing the waves of potential into material forms in our reality. And this is such an amazing revelation because what it means is that we are truly creating our reality as we move through it with the power of our intentions, our expectations. We collapse the waves of potential into form as we move through our realities. This is the power we have as creator beings projecting our thought forms into our reality. And so each and every day, we have the opportunity to choose how we want to produce the movie that we're walking through and not just for ourselves, but for others, projecting with intention the most positive outcomes and so we project forms of sacred geometry into the reality, which become forms. <laughs> I'm fascinated by quantum physics. And so we do, we have seven embodied chakras or rays, plus five ethereal chakras, the five secret rays, and one 13th gateway chakra. <sighs> And so these are the 12 archetypes. These are the 12 chakras. And I like to move people through a chakra journey that not only cleanses, clears, activates, enlightens their embodied chakras, but moves into their upper chakras. We start by activating the kundalini energy at the base of the spine. And this is where I'd like to take you into a practice. 
And so close your eyes and focus all of your energy and attention to a point at the base of your spine. Breathe into this point. And as you do, imagine two intertwined serpents, one electric blue and one magnetic red spinning at the base of your spine. Take a nice deep breath and on the exhalation, send all of your energy and attention there. As you awaken this spiraling kundalini energy at the base of your spine, you may feel a tingling sensation there. You may feel heat rising. Now on the inhalation, pull that kundalini energy, these intertwined serpents up through your root chakra. Imagine a bright red crystal wheel spinning at the base of your spine. Breathe into this crystal wheel, releasing it to spin. Visualize this bright red wheel spinning and expanding and ignite a bright white light in the center. Imagine an explosion of bright white light erupting at the center and creating a white portal through which your kundalini energy can ascend. Take a nice deep breath and on the inhalation, pull that kundalini energy up your spine. Imagine the red and blue serpents ascending and braiding your spine. Feel a tingling sensation as this electromagnetic energy ascends your spine and plugs into your next chakra. This is your sacral chakra, a bright orange crystal wheel. Breathe into this wheel, releasing it to spin. Feel that wheel spin and expand. This is the wheel of desire and creativity. Spinning this wheel allows creativity to flow. Ignite a bright white light in the center of this wheel and watch as it spreads throughout the wheel, illuminating it. Take a nice deep breath and on the inhalation, pull the kundalini energy up through this wheel. Allow it to ascend and braid your spine and plugging into the next chakra, which is your solar plexus, this golden wheel of empowerment. Breathe into it. Feel this golden wheel spin and expand at the core of your being and ignite a golden light in the center. Watch as this golden light expands throughout the wheel. As this wheel spins, you become empowered to do, be, and have anything you desire, anything that serves the highest good for all. This golden wheel is also about manifestation and abundance. Spinning this wheel allows you to become a master manifester, attracting all the abundance you need to perform your soul's mission here on earth. Now take a nice deep breath and on the inhalation, pull the kundalini energy up through the center of this wheel. And as you do, feel that kundalini energy ascend and braid your spine, plugging into your heart chakra, this beautiful emerald green wheel. Breathe into this love chakra. As this bright green wheel spins and expands, you may feel a flood of love flow through you. Pure, 
unconditional love for yourself and all others. This wheel is also about forgiveness, patience, kindness, compassion. Ignite a bright white light in the center of this wheel and allow it to expand throughout the wheel, transmuting any shadows into light. Here we can do a forgiveness practice. If there's anyone you feel you need to forgive, just imagine them standing in front of you now. And say, I forgive you. And I love you. I forgive you and I thank you for all the valuable lessons you have taught me. And I thank you for teaching me the virtues of patience and kindness and understanding and forgiveness. Now, take a nice deep breath and on the inhalation, pull the kundalini energy up through this white portal and allow that kundalini energy to ascend and braid your spine. Feel that tingling sensation as it moves into your throat, plugging into your throat chakra. Breathe into this chakra, allowing it to expand this sky blue wheel opening your throat. This is the wheel of communication, opening your throat portal so communication can flow freely through you and communication from your spirit guides and higher selves can flow into you. Ignite a bright white light in the center of this wheel, transmuting any shadows, any blockages, preventing you from communicating clearly with integrity, with clarity. Allow the love energy from your heart to flow up into your throat so that all of your words are love inspired. Now, with the kundalini energy plugged into your throat chakra, allow this kundalini energy to plug into your brain stem. And then allow the electromagnetic blue serpent to pour electricity in to the right side of your brain. And allow the magnetic red serpent to pour magnetic energy into the left side of your brain. The right side spiritual, the left side practical, masculine, feminine. And now focus on the indigo blue wheel spinning at the center of your head. This is your sixth chakra. And as it spins, the indigo blue pours into the magnetic red. The left merging with the right. The masculine merging with the feminine. There is no separation. All is one. Doing this, balancing your masculine and feminine energy and becoming one allows you to be both practical and spiritual, logical and magical, reasonable and mystical all at once. Focus on spinning that indigo blue wheel to activate your sixth sense and to open your third eye. With laser focus on that point between your brows, Open your third eye so that you can stream consciousness with your eternal soul essence and so that you can access the Akashic records 
accessing all the information and intelligence of all time in your own Akashic records, enhancing your psychic awareness. Now focus all of your energy and attention on a violet wheel spinning, expanding atop your crown. Feel the spinning sensation there. Notice this violet wheel and witness a golden portal at the center. This is your crown portal. Opening this portal allows you to receive divine blessings of love and light pouring into your crown from the highest heavens. Accessing source consciousness. Imagine golden liquid love flowing into your crown. Feel this golden nectar filling your entire head flowing down your neck and shoulders, flowing down your arms and into your hands and fingers. Allow this liquid golden love to flow into your chest, flowing down into your upper abdomen, into your lower abdomen, filling your hips and pelvis. Allow the golden nectar to flow down your thighs, filling your knees flowing down your calves, filling your feet and toes. You are now filled with the golden liquid love of the divine source. You have activated your golden light body. Open your eyes. Now, with your golden light body activated, you are the light of the world, and you have come here to shine your golden love light on everyone around you, inviting others to be part of the new earth. You are a way shower. You are a light worker. I invite you to attend my Sedona Ascension Retreat where we bring the unity community together here in this powerful vortex of Sedona to raise the love light vibration for all. Please visit SedonaAscensionRetreats.com and feel free to use the code Ascension10. I invite you to check out my virtuality masterclass on my website, SuzanneRossTranscendence.com where you'll find my books, sessions, and personal retreats that I host here in Sedona. I want to thank my beloved brothers and sisters for putting on this beautiful event today. Bless you for serving the light of love and bless the beautiful soul family members who are joining us. I send you all all of the love in my heart. I love each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. This is Neil, founder of Portal to Ascension, and just closing out this podcast here and letting you know that what you're experiencing are all types of presentations that we have on Portal to Ascension, uh, such a wide variety, different audio clips from um, conferences that we do, and then other interviews that we have also on our YouTube. And I want to take this moment here at the end and just talk to you about a few upcoming things with Portal to Ascension. We're really excited because 2023... We're really blasting off, and we have um, a few conferences. We have Portal to Ascension San Diego, April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. We have Portal to Ascension Glastonbury in the UK. Hope to see some of you there. That's August 11th, 12th, and 13th of next year. And then, or 2023, if you're listening to it now. And then we're also taking a tour of people to Egypt, guys. And we're going to go for from September 7th. We're going to have the Hertex with us, JJ and Desiree Hertex, like you might have experienced on our channel. 
Uh, Joan of Angels is going to be with us and also Alan Steinfeld. And actually, I have Joan of Angels here with me right now, so I'm going to just hand it over to her and get your input, Joan, on what we're going to be experiencing, your excitement and all of that. So this is a critical time in our history on the planet, and 2023 is this reawakening of our... It's just our reawakening of our spirituality and our transformation along this ascension timeline. So these events are designed to really awaken you, to really bring you to remember who you are, why you're here, your galactic origins, the power, the personal power we have within us to shift into the planet that we really want mm -hmm. at the most optimum of potential to align our body, mind, and spirit to get there. So these, just to be together in person activates forgotten memories, activates light codes, activates DNA, and most of all, activates your happiness cells. Because mm. the joy in coming together is just extraordinary. So we invite you to come and be with us in any of these events around the world. And even online, we try to create that same energetics. Mm. So we love you all that we are creating a mystery school that goes around the planet and right. off planet. Exactly, yes. And just a few websites for you. So firstly, of course, the main website, portaltoascension.org, we'll have everything there. You can sign up and get 1,000 plus, well, it's over 3,000 at this point, hours of free conscious content, you know, like a streaming platform where you can browse and all that. And then ascensionconference.com for Portal to Ascension San Diego, ascensionglassenbury.com for the Glastonbury Conference, and then the Egypt Tour is going to be on Portal to Ascension or is on portaltoascension.org as well. Um, yeah, so some beautiful, amazing experiences. We're really blasting off. It's time to get exponential. You know, we've been exponential, but now the exponential curve is even going even higher because it's really time for us to remember who we are, tap in our true potential, and make some change on Earth that's better for, creates betterment for everybody, right? And that's why we're doing what we do. That's why this podcast exists. So excited to see you guys there. AscensionConference.com and Portal to Ascension. Joan, any few any closing words? Ascension Glastonbury. Yeah, we're all taking off together. This is this is the times for which we've been called, loves. Can't wait to see you there. Love you all. <laughs>